Hello, Sally and I welcome you to Streams of Living Water, flowing today from our home. Someone actually asked me once, what day is Ash Wednesday this year? Okay, I'm pretty sure the person was asking what date, but there are things about Ash Wednesday that seem clear, but aren't obvious, like its meaning for life. Today, we're going to find out what that is. I'm Pastor David Birkenall, and my wife, Reverend Sally Welch, and I are co-producing these videos to provide a sense of connection and encouragement and an opportunity to reflect on what it means to be a Christian during this global pandemic, now possibly becoming an endemic as we move now into the new normal. We are retired clergy with over 80 years of ordained ministry experience between the two of us. Finlandia is a classical music piece written by Jean Sibelius in 1889 and 1900 during the Russian occupation of Finland. It was a protest song, a song objecting to the Russian Empire's refusal to allow freedom of the press. It's the melody for two of the hymns in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship hymn book and service book for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, of which I am part. One is number 792, called When Memory Fades, which is a very sweet hymn about God's remembering us when our memory is not what it used to be. I saw a t-shirt the other day that said, it's weird being the same age as old people, but if you are old or if you think someday you might be old, this hymn might be worth taking a look at for you. The other is number 887 called This Is My Song, which is found in the small national song section in the back of the book. It's a hymn that acknowledges that everyone has a love for their own country, but that God has a love for all nations. The second verse of the hymn ends with a prayer to God for peace for our nation and for theirs. This coming Wednesday, we'll celebrate Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the church's season of Lent. We will have the sign of the cross smeared on our foreheads with oil and ashes. The oil, usually olive oil, and the ashes, usually the ashes from the burned palm branches of last Palm Sunday service. This year, we'll be especially thinking about the people of Ukraine who are living in ashes, walking in ashes, fighting in ashes, and watching ashes being produced. We'll be praying for peace in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, for our nation and for theirs. We will pray for the day when rebellion against God ends and sin no longer brings evil and suffering into the perfect world that God created. And there is a new heaven and a new earth without end. And we'll begin the 40 days of Lent between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday, excluding Sundays, which are like little Easter's. We will prepare to celebrate the reconciliation between God and human beings that was accomplished for us at the cross. It is a model for how we are to be reconciled with one another. Lent is a time for honest self-examination a time to repent of the wrong that we have done. Part of that repentance is the resolve not to repeat what we have done that grieves God and has led us away from God. Lent is the engagement in the struggle with those things that are killing us and a time to turn to God and know the abundant life that is God's will for all people. We will begin the season of Lent, the preparatory season in the Easter cycle, with these words from Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 20. We begin with verse 1. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Does it seem odd to be reading these verses on Ash Wednesday when we practice our piety before others in the most public fashion of the whole year? I mean, we could say that we're doing it at night and going straight home, but still. The verses don't stop, however, at beware of practicing your piety before others. I mean, isn't this the same Jesus who said, no one after lighting a lamp 
puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The warning that Jesus gives us is against the religious expressions we do before others in order to be seen by them. It's not the action, it's the motivation. What could fall into this category in a culture that is increasingly indifferent, if not hostile to expressions of religious belief? We can't see a person's motivation, but I sometimes wonder about people who put lots of praying hands emojis in their texts, or wear big crosses on TV, or do things that are the religious equivalent to virtue signaling. We are to let our lights shine, but to glorify God, not ourselves. We continue with verse 2. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Rich guys used to literally go through the temple, going to the seven boxes where you could put different kinds of offerings with a trumpeter in front of them. And the trumpeter and the people in his entourage would go and the trumpeter would go, da -da 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 -da. check out the rich guy who's giving a bunch of money in this temple. And it would take the bag of money, go thump. And they go to the next one, da -da 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 -da. check out the rich guy over here, look at all the money he's giving, thump. Jesus said, don't do that. We are to let our lights shine but to glorify God, not ourselves. The text continues with verse 5. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. How many of us have said, I'll pray for you, and then don't, and then we see that person again, and we throw up a quick one and say, I've been praying for you. Yeah, I'm not the only one. God sees and God knows. We are to let our lights shine, but to God's glory and not our own. The passage continues with verse 16. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Pro hint, don't fast unless you've first spoken with your doctor or medical professional. I fasted once for three days after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, and the food service said if we wanted to fast as a sign of repentance and regret, that the money that was saved by our not eating meals there would be sent to a charity supported by Dr. King. So I did, and I didn't um, stop my regular activities. I went running just the same, which was not very smart. I was younger then, but still, if you're going to fast, do it in a way, yeah, keep up your regular activities, but check with your medical professional first. And yeah, I guess I am kind of virtue signaling there. We are to let our lights shine, but to glorify God and not ourselves. Jesus concludes this passage beginning at verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our money is a portable form of what we value. The way we use our money is an expression of what we value. Do you want to know what you value? Look at your credit card statement or your checkbook records or your budget. Martin Luther, the 16th century reformer, once said, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. 
But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. On Ash Wednesday, the sign of the cross will be drawn on our foreheads with ashes. It's a reminder to us, as we have seen in Ukraine, of how quickly things can turn. The ashes will be applied to us with the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We will be reminded of the big picture. Jesus once asked in Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and 37, speaking of those who would be his followers, for what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? This week, the source of our lives will be drawn with ashes. As Paul writes in Romans 6, verses 3 through 5, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I once read about the first missionaries to the Fiji Islands. At that time, the Fiji Islands were not a wedding destination place. They were a place where cannibals lived and nobody went there. Ships going past the islands on their way to Japan or coming from Japan would stop to take on fresh water and trade, but that was it. In order to do that, a boat would come out to the ship and a small dinghy would be uh, put into the water from the larger ship and they would meet and trade and then go back to their land or to their ship. Missionaries to the Fiji couldn't get a way ashore, so they had to buy tickets to Japan. And when they got to Fiji, they told the captain that they wanted to go on the boat and be taken ashore. The captain said, I can't let you do that. And the missionary head said, well, that's what we want to do. And he said, I, I'm not going to let you go on shore. If you go on shore, you'll die. And the head of the missionaries said, we died before we came. Death is a past tense experience for the baptized. We are living in ashes. Our ashes are a sign of hope, a gift from God, the hope of the world. We have entered a new life. We are a new creation. We have been born again. Let that be the value by which we live our lives in this new Lenten season. And may it guide us to renewed life in the promises of Easter. Let us pray. Lord, you meet us at the mountaintop and walk with us through the valleys. May the ashes placed on our foreheads this Wednesday be a sign for us of the new life we have been given by the cross, and may we live that life to your glory. Gracious God, you are the Savior of the world. May all hearts turn to you and seek your ways of reconciliation and peace for all. May greed of all kinds come to an end. May hunger of all kinds come to an end. May your light fill every corner of this world. May the hostilities in Ukraine come to an end in a way that promotes the sovereignty and well-being of that nation. May your blessing and good be poured out upon Russia, and may they seek to do your will for all people. We ask this in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We bring before you the requests that have been made known to us for Dean George Pandua and his wife Esther and our brothers and sisters in Christ in Tanzania, particularly in the new church at Takawa. For pastors and church leaders as they make difficult decisions about worship and congregational life for the greater good of God's people as we soon move into the new normal. For lasting peace in the Middle East, particularly in Afghanistan, and for our armed forces who have served there, for recovery for Haiti, for an end of the pandemic throughout the world, for an end to the tragedies at our borders, for all those who are suffering as a result of the recent and clement weather, and that all may come to life and peace and salvation in you, for healing for Jeffrey and Jeff and Stephen and Mike and Candy and Rob, for comfort and peace in the sure and certain hope of resurrection unto eternal life for the families of all those who have died of COVID-19 and other causes, we ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, let's remember to pray for all those who have yet to get the vaccine and the booster. 
for they're at greatest risk to themselves of getting the virus and of passing the virus on to others. And let's remember to pray the Lord's Prayer today, the prayer that Jesus taught us. If you don't know what that is, contact us at the Revs David and Sally at gmail.com or send us a tweet to at David Burkadal and we'll send it to you. Send your prayer requests and any other comments or concerns to those addresses as well. As always, we encourage you to stay hydrated, to allow the presence of the Holy Spirit, the streams of living water, metaphor in the Old and New Testament for the Holy Spirit to form you and shape you, to inspire you, to open your heart and mind to the presence of God all around you. Remember your church, support it with your time, treasure, and talent. If you don't have a church, find one, talk to some friends or relatives, do some research. Pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to the church. It is calling you to come and be a part of. When you are a part of a church, and if you are already a part of a church, support your pastor and church leaders. They're trying to find the best way forward for everybody and to please everybody. And you know how impossible that is. So let them know that you are praying for them and do everything you can with your time, your treasure, and your talent to support the ministry that God has given your church. If you're having thoughts of suicide or struggling with mental health issues, contact somebody, talk to a friend or a relative, talk to a professional, talk to a hotline. There are people all around you who will walk with you through this difficult time to the future that I know that God is preparing for you. You are not alone. Wear your mask or masks, practice social distancing, avoid crowds if you can, wash or sanitize your hands regularly. Those are still important things to do, but the most important thing you can do, one that will literally save lives, is to get your vaccine and your boosters. We do it not just for ourselves, but primarily for others, to do all these things in order to keep people healthy, to bring us back to the world that God would have us live, and to be a person that is concerned more than anything about ourselves with the welfare of others. Be kind to everyone you come into contact with today. Everyone struggles in some way. Everyone needs a word of encouragement as we move forward. Be a person that builds others up. And now let us receive the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.